to the ancient rhythm Rock into the ancient rhythm Love is my religion Love is Good morning ladies and gentlemen My name is Alexander Udilangu I'm the founder of Nugu Utopia Thank you for being on this episode today uh, We're going to go over a quick overview of human potential and how to maximize it um, and before we get into the meat of the conversation we first have to define what human potential is like what is human potential you know how do we how does a human being figure out how to maximize their potential to get it to a point where we can understand human potential and then we can model human potential and then we can optimize human potential and then we can maximize human potential to get to that point we first have to understand what human potential is what is human potential to understand what that is we have to understand what a human is what is a human what is potential and those are the underlying questions that we have to first answer before we can explore optimizing potential, we can explore maximizing this. So what is a human being? Humans are material um, entities. We're made of material of matter. Um, and how does a human sort of fit in the hierarchy of the universe how are you part of the universe or are you separated from the universe the reality is that human beings are part of that system we are surrounded by the universe within and outside of us as within so without as above so below the universe is around us we are attached to the to the core of the universe we are attached to the starting point of the universe what the scientists call the big bang so from that understanding we know that the material human um essentially is is controlled by the same rules that govern the universe if the material energy in all humans, in all material beings, has existed since the inception of the universe. That means that all humans are in essence attached to that origin. In essence, all humans are governed by the same rules that we've been studying in physics and chemistry to understand the universe. I mean, this is pretty. This is pretty well known in physics. We understand how to model uh, physical systems in chemistry, which is just a different layer. We understand how to model chemical systems, and then we understand how to model biological systems. And then when we go deeper, we go into mathematical systems. When we go deeper, we eventually end up at the inception point of the universe itself. So now the question becomes what rules govern this universe because if we can figure out the rules that govern this universe then we can figure out the rules that govern humans we can figure out the rules that govern all material beings and if we understand how this rule works with humans then we can truly understand how to maximize a human we can truly understand how to how to design systems in society in humanity that, mac that benefits the human um, uh, uh, at, a, at, a, at the highest efficiency rate. And what do I mean by efficiency rate? Now let's go back to uh, 2020. Let's look at the systems that we, we, um, we use today, right? So let's look at our, 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 let's start very simple. Let's look at our educational system. Let's look at our healthcare system. Let's look at our transportation systems. Let's look at our governmental systems. Let's look at let's look at all systems that we we sort of develop to govern humanity, right? And the question that we should ask ourselves is: 
do these systems or are these systems governed by the same rules that govern the universe? And if these systems do not pass that test, then those systems are not the right systems to model humanity. And 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 this is such this is such a large scale project that once we understand how these basic fundamental rules work, we can not only model political global systems, we can model interpersonal systems, we can model we can model all systems, right? Including the human system. We can optimize the human and we can maximize them to a point where they're able to really live their life to the maximal level, maximizing their potential and what people in society today call happiness would actually be, would, would be achieved. Because happiness comes from maximizing potential. Happiness does not come from external uh, 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 forces. Happiness comes from within. So whenever you accomplish something or you do something that you thought you couldn't do, what happens? You get rewarded. In the chemical world, uh, you, you get rewarded with, 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 with chemical serotonin endorphins. In, 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 in the mechanical world, it's an exchange of energy. You, see, you guys see what I'm saying? The same rules apply in chemistry, in the chemical reality, biological reality, and physical reality. So to understand ourselves and maximize ourselves, we have to understand the universe itself. We have to understand the rules that go in that universe. So here's the important thing about this universal system, about, about figuring out this model, this equation that models our universe in its entirety. Once we have this model, and we can model all systems in, in, on planet Earth with this original equation, then this essentially creates a utopia because this is a self-sustaining system. A self-sustaining system does not require external forces. Just like I said earlier, happiness does not come from external sources. External sources only become involved when work is trying to be essentially siphoned or hijacked. The reason why every human being on planet Earth today has to get up and go to work and, and spend their energy to survive is because we don't have a universal system of energy exchange. What we have is, is an exploitative system that tells humans that they have to go create work by consuming energy, by, uh, by, uh, by spending their energy, I mean. So you're going to sp you spend your energy to put into a system, let's say capitalism the system, to put in a system that creates work, right? Now, where does this work go? So if you go to work eight hours a day, where does this work go? Where does this energy that you put in go? It doesn't go back to benefit you. It's siphoned. And it goes somewhere else. And that's the fundamental issue with today's society is that we have lost our understanding of how the world works, of how the universe works. Every single thing is an energy exchange mechanism that requires no external energy. Every system from the inception point of the universe had two fundamental constants. And this is the most important thing you're ever going to learn. These two fundamental constants are this. It's stability and growth. You optimize for stability and you maximize for growth. That's literally how our universe expands. That's the definition of intelligence. This is the fundamental basis for all systems, stability and growth. 
Now, if you were to test any system on the planet, technological system, biological system, political system, it doesn't fucking matter. Test for two variables. You, you test for the efficiency of its stability and you test for its ability to maximize. The problem with today is that most of the systems that we have, earthly systems, have only one of, one of those variables. Stability. Earthlings seem to only care about stability. Stability is important, but stability is just 50% of the equation. And the reason why they've been able to exploit humans for so long is because we've convinced humans that stability is the definition of intelligence. That stability is the definition of reality. That's not true. Stability is the foundation and then growth is the other function. There always has to be a growth variable. Simple as that. Look at this. I made a model for you guys. Check this out. Can you see that? So if you see, we have this, the stable, the stable uh, uh, concentric circle, circles spinning around and getting wider and wider and wider, creating stability. And then what do we have at the bottom at the top? We have growth. We have, you can see that? Okay, you guys can see. We have right here, growth. So growth negative, growth negative down here, growth positive up here, and stability. Stability, stability, stability. All systems have the same fucking functions. It's that simple. So whenever you want to test a system, if you want to know if you're being exploited or not, when it, whenever when someone wants to offer you something, test for two variables: stability and growth. If one of those variables are missing, you're gonna get exploited. This applies to all systems, global systems interpersonal systems and individual systems and this is the fundamental basis for all systems for all universal systems is stability and growth and this is the most important thing you're going to learn stability and growth stability and growth we're going to explore those two in later episodes but that's all I have for you today. My name is Alexander Ojilangu. I'm the founder of New Growth Utopia. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.